Have you ever heard the explanation you can cut the tension with a knife inside that room? And what they're talking about is the sense, the aura, the energy, kind of the, you know, the demeanor of that, of that, of that surrounding, that environment. And it's, it's weird, right? How we have kind of these receptors where we can sense that this particular room or maybe the environment that we've walked into, something is off. Like if you've ever walked into maybe a setting and you could sense that the people in there were just arguing, <laughs> like did that make you feel awkward? And uh, Or maybe even the opposite way where you walked in the room and you could tell that everyone was just laughing. And I think that we have these receptors because we could pick up not only on energies, but we can also read the body languages. And this has a lot to do with our emotional intelligence. And as some of you already know, I've dedicated this week to emotional intelligence. And today is Tuesday, uh, November 6, 2018. And it's no different. Today we're going to talk about the signs of emotional intelligence, how you can read these signs and ultimately know how to communicate best within that environment. So if you want to know how to better orchestrate yourself or conduct yourself within any given environment, this is going to be very helpful for people within sales because I think that we enter in multiple varieties of, of environments at any given day. And that's what makes sales so exciting is that it's never the same thing every single day, right? It's, uh, it's usually constantly changing. And, uh, and we are fortunate enough to have these resources available that give us the upper hand so that we could be better at our craft. So if you want to know how to read emotional intelligence or if you'd like to learn more about emotional intelligence, what we're going to cover in this video is how to read it. Let's go. Let me show you everything I know. Jungles like what's up everybody welcome back to sales remastered my name is daniel and i'm your host and in this episode we're going to talk about emotional intelligence today is episode number two an emotional intelligence week we'll call it ei like ei ei <laughs> man i should probably use that as my intro song huh um, anyway, uh, the the reason why I'm covering emotional intelligence is because, as I had mentioned yesterday, I think that this is a powerful tool to have. You know, because emotions surround us. We are just in the sport of emotions, especially if you are in sales and you conduct sales for a living. You are better off understanding the signs of emotions, the cues of certain emotions, so that you can be better prepared to to not only relay those specific emotions, but to match and, and also mirror those emotions. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you different methods of how to read emotions, how you can then kind of conduct yourself if you're in that specific setting and be better heard or better understood within whatever message you're trying to relay. And so, of course, I'm gonna use sales because this channel is called Sales Remastered. But if with enough creativity, you're gonna learn how to adapt these things in other areas of your life, whether you're communicating with your spouse or you're communicating with your boss or you're communicating with your subordinates, whatever your situation may be, having a, a sense of emotional intelligence, knowing how to use it within your favor will give you undoubtedly an upper hand against whatever resistance or pushback you get in trying to achieve a specific goal. So in emotional intelligence, the very one of the very first things is at least being aware of people's emotions. And this can be anything from their energy to their body language. And when I say energy, I'm talking about their the their sense. Like when you get around someone who's kind of tense, you can feel it. Right, I just you just need to pay attention to that. So because I, and why I say that is because so many people are sometimes so caught within their own zone, they're so focused within their own kind of narrow path. Whether it's on your cell phone or you're kind of uh, maybe flooded with thoughts of what you have to do in that day, but if you take a second to at least be aware of your surroundings, you're going to notice that there are so many different type of energies in different pockets. So next time you go to a coffee shop or next time you go to a public setting, I want you to pay attention to the people around you. You know, it's a people watch for a day. And what you're going to notice is that there are so many different type of emotions that you can almost sense or read what kind of emotional state that that person is in. And so for example, 
if you walked into a Starbucks and you can sense by maybe the way someone is sitting that they are focused because they're sitting upright, their, their facial expression kind of gives like this demeanor of, of I got to get this done, I got to get this done. They're focused, they're on point. Whereas if you look next to them, you could see someone who's kind of sit back, they got their legs spread out, maybe even kicked up on an ottoman. They have their, you know what I mean, the, the, they're, they're reading a book, <laughs> right? And they just have this demeanor that they're not in no rush. So I can sense that that person is not necessarily focused, but they are just trying to unwind. And they're, they're more or less kind of going along with their rhythm of the flow. Where if we change the environment, and we let's say use a sales environment so if I was engaging with someone for the very first time and I get a sense that this person is nervous I could tell because of their tonality I can also tell if they're in a hurry or they're in a rush by the speed of their tone I can also tell if they are more methodical and, and slow like they like to analyze they like maybe they're a numbers person um, they want to really absorb the message because they speak slow and I can also sense if they're not in any rush now here's the interesting thing is though whatever energy that they have when they first engage with you through their tonality through their words used and and kind of through their demeanor and their attitude you are able to shift it and control it. <laughs> Crazy, right? And this is what uh, emotions, are, this is what's called mirroring. And so when, for example, if you get someone who calls you and they're in a rush, you're gonna notice that they're, or sometimes, they're just doing that because they wanna, they wanna get off the phone to protect themselves. Again, another sign of emotional intelligence is understanding when someone is just scared. You, you you have, like, you know who has good emotional intelligence are poker players. Because <laughs> they could read tales, right? Like, uh, they, could, they could remember cues or signs of when people react a specific way. It's because it's their subconscious talking. It's their emotions talking. Does that make sense? And so, like, uh, a form of our subconscious talking through our body language is at times where we look up. When we look up, we're trying to remember something right like mm, and you're trying to remember a visual item that you saw this is vid visual where if you look down to the left you're trying to think of something audio audio an audio uh, uh, a memory right in audio form something that you've heard and they're just subconscious tells that that you could read from specific people it is very interesting I became very fascinated with this idea because I'm in a sales environment whether it's in person or it's on the phone predominantly over the phone and I think emotions are hard to read over the phone but yet tonality represents so much of your message and tonality cannot be seen so going back to controlling someone's energy someone's emotional state is by mirroring you're basically matching their rhythm. You're matching their tonality. So if they call you in a very big rush and they're talking like this and they're trying to get off the phone, you have to match them. Oh yeah, let me go ahead and help you out. I'm gonna send it to your over to your email. I won't take too much time. I'm gonna send it right now, right? Does that make sense? And ultimately what you're doing is you're inviting them subconsciously. You're letting them know you're on their same wavelength in a sense. You're on their same level and subconsciously they're going to immediately like you <laughs> it's crazy and the reason why is because they feel like they're being heard it's weird and when you have the opportunity to try this i want you to try this and the opposite effect too if they're talking really slow right like you're talking to mildred out in idaho who lives in the rural area and she's got nowhere to go all day <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you want to do is talk to Mildred. Yeah, let me go ahead and send it out to you right now. I'm going to send it over your email right now. Right? Like it, it because you're not matching her tone, therefore you're actually going to push her away. But if you if you at least have empathy, which is another strength of emotional intelligence, you're going to to realize that in order to get through to Mildred, in order to get Mildred to like you, you need to be like Mildred and so mirror her. Uh, through her rhythm, through her speed, through her pace of, of, of tone, right? And so through, the, through mirroring her pace, at some point, 
she's going to start following your pace or even in the same breath he like the one that was in a rush at some point they're going to slow down and actually start matching your pace you can actually do this in person as well where you can match their body language like if you you know if you do face-to-face -face sales and you got one of the people who just crossed their arms because they're in a more guarded state again a, a subconscious sign that they're in def in a defensive state is that they'll actually protect themselves by crossing their arms or giving themselves a kind of a, a mean confused look right uh, because they that's their way that's their subconscious mind in trying to protect themselves anyway if you're in person you can actually match their body language and you'll know that you have hooked them or you have you have rapport built if you can change their body language to match yours crazy right like I want to share with you a, a story and I'll end it with this you know I used to do face-to-face -face appointments all the time I would actually meet some of my prospects in in Starbucks and in certain coffee shops or certain locations even at their house I used to do sales um, inside the dining room of uh, my prospects house I would set an appointment go out there and meet with them and I would meet with just a wide range of different type of personalities but each and every single personality what whatever type of profession it was it all kind of narrowed down the specific emotional reactions and these emotional reactions were fear love it was uh, you know uh, 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 from a place of, of I want to say frugality right like uh, being conservative um, these these people all ultimately came down to certain points of status and if you really think about it, if you peel back the layers of, of why you do things, right? Like, I, I work hard because I want to provide for my family. Well, peel back the layer by asking yourself why. Why do you work so hard and why do you want to take care of your family? And then you're going to peel back a layer and you're going to figure out, well, the reason why I, I do that is because I want to um, let my family know that I could support them. I don't ever want them to want for anything. And then if you peel back the layer of that and you say, well, why, why is that important to you? Um, you're gonna figure out you're gonna realize that well it's because I grew up without that I don't know I you know I know how it feels to not have that and I want to make sure my family knows what it's like to have that and then if you again peel back the layer from that and you ask yourself well why why is it important again understanding people's why is where I'm getting at is a is is one of the signs of emotional intelligence is because you're understanding why they are the way they are and so if they're in a defensive state well you want to figure out why and but nonetheless if you can break through these layers you're going to figure out that that at the very core of everything is there is a, a, is a desired status everything comes down to status and the reason why i want like so for example the reason why i want to provide for my family is because i know that what it's like not to have those things i know what it's like to go without i know what it's like to not have a parent i know what it's like right and so these are specific desires and but the ultimately the core reason is because well i just want to be loved and love is is probably the most powerful emotion and people are gonna are gonna find love in different ways people are gonna find love through expressing name brand clothes people are gonna find love by you know having most friends and communities and this is why some people it's very important for them to to uh, do home improvements so that they can have guests over and they're going to enunciate the uh, the primary motives that that inspires them and so this is why it's important to use their words because that is what's going to push them past the idea of price rate cost fees reputation familiarity and so even if you're brand new to the sport or even if you're not necessarily the cheapest service provider what you can do is create an unbreakable bond that you you can form with somebody a complete stranger and through emotional intelligence through having the awareness of how to how to read emotions control emotions and then transfer emotions that my friend is persuasion and if you are if you are strong with understanding this skill you could persuade anyone to do anything you want and so these are very powerful techniques right this is a very powerful concept and so it's important that you be careful and you and you have a good heart in understanding emotional intelligence although it is of course 
uh, rather persuasive. The idea is to use it to advance yourself. And why not take the opportunity to learn a method to advance yourself and use it to help others advance themselves by helping them help themselves, by helping them create a solution to better improve their life, not to only improve your life and leave them hung to dry or broke because they overpaid for something. Do the right thing and you'll have this emotional intelligence with no regret that will shine through as confidence, it will shine through as certainty, and you will naturally attract the attitude and energy you want through your demeanor because subconsciously you are communicating that message. So I hope you guys find this video very helpful and uh, please comment below. Let me know what your two cents are. Let me know what your feedback was or your favorite takeaway and I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye. Hey. My team came from the bottom on the rise, yeah. God, please don't get me lost in this ride, yeah. Went to sleep, I had a dream of that fish scale. Then she woke up and put it right on the street at retail.